Greetings, everyone. How are you doing? And how are you doing? Good, good. And how about you? Good, good. I'm glad everyone's doing well. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at L'Hopital's Rule. L'Hopital's Rule. So what I would like for you to do is to write that down, L'Hopital's Rule. And in essence, well, we say it's the word hospital without an S in it, you know. The S is missing. <laughs> the hospital's rule. <laughs> anyway, L'Hopital's Rule. So I have notes on the board. So before we get started, I want you to take a minute, pause the video, because I'm going to get out your way, and I want you to copy down the notes. Once the notes are copied, start me back up, and we'll pick up where we left off. Okay? Can you do that? Okay. I'm going to exit now, stage right. My right, your left. <laughs> Sound like in the military, right? Right, left. Okay, anyway, watch this. I'm back. Did you copy it all down? Did you? Okay, let's get into it because we have a lot to do. It's going to be a long lesson, but it's okay. We're going to get to it, so pay attention. Here we go. All right. L'Hopital's rule. But first, I want to start with the indeterminate forms. If you have an indeterminate form, that means that there is no numeric value because positive or negative infinity is not a number. So here are our indeterminate forms, of which there are seven. Indeterminate form number one, which my students, you guys have seen this before. Zero over zero, that's an indeterminate form. Because how do you determine which number multiplied by zero is zero? In other words, take the question mark right here and multiply it by zero. Well, the answer is going to be zero. But how do you determine what number the question mark is? Is the question mark 1? Is it 7? Is it negative 10? Is it a million? Is it a thousand? How do you determine which number to use? I don't know. <laughs> See? So that's why that was indeterminate. Because you don't know which number to choose or select. All of them make it true. Alright? So that's why this one is indeterminate. Number two. Positive a negative infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. Well, this is indeterminate because check this out. The limit as x approaches infinity of 6x divided by 6, well, you cancel out the x's and you're left with 6, right? Or, wait a minute. If the limit as x approaches infinity of 6x divided by 6, is it 6 times infinity? Because you take infinity, plug it in for x. 6 times infinity divided by infinity which is infinity over infinity? Is that what it is? Or is it both of them? Six and infinity over infinity. <laughs> My goodness. Stay tuned, we're gonna find out. Alright? Zero to the power of zero is also a what? Indeterminate form. Why? Because, watch this. The power of zero the power of zero pulls everything towards one. Look at the power of zero. One to the power of zero, one. Two to the power of zero, one. Three to the power of zero, one. Four to the power of zero, one. So the power pulls everything toward one. Okay? But what about the base? What is the base doing? The base, on the other hand, okay, 0 base to the power of 1 is 0. 0 squared, 0. 0 cubed, 0. 0 to the power of 4, 0. So the base is pulling everything towards 0. Power pulling toward 1, base pulling towards 0. So there's a power struggle here. There's a tug of war going on here. Do you see that? And so we cannot determine which one's winning. Who's winning? So it's indeterminate for that reason. Oh. Alright, likewise, number four. You have one to the power of plus or minus infinity. 
Alright, now notice this. Let's start with the base in this case, 1. We just talked about that. 1 to the power of 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 cubed is 1. 1 to the fourth is 1. So 1 is pulling or trending toward 1. When the base is 1, we get an output of 1. On the other hand, the power plus or minus infinity. Now watch this. Consider the limit as n goes to infinity of the quantity 1 plus 1 divided by n all to the power of n. Now if I take infinity and plug it in for n right here, 1 over infinity goes to 0 as n gets increasingly large. And 1 plus 0 is 1. So this piece here can go to 1, right? Well, if this is going to 1, 1 to the infinity as n gets increasingly large equals e. And e is 2.718281818 dot 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 dot. So 1 as the base is pulling towards 1, but when you put infinity as the power, it's pulling towards e. So who's winning here? We're going to do a problem like this as we go into L'Hopital's rule. It's going to clear this up. It's going to clear it up very nicely for you. So who's winning? Power struggle. Number five, same thing. Plus or minus infinity to the power of zero is another indeterminate form. Why? Because the power of zero is trending or pulling toward one. One to the zero power is one. See that? It's the power. 2 to the power of 0, 1. 3 to the power of 0, 1. 4 to the power of 0, 1. So 0 is pulling toward 1. But yet the base, infinity, is not pulling towards 1. That's getting increasingly large. Large. Not 1, but large. Right? Or it's getting infinitely small if it's going to negative infinity. So it's diametrically opposed. They have the oppositions right here. Oppos opposite forces here. They are opposing one another. We can't determine who's winning. Indeterminate form number six. Indeterminate form six. Zero multiplied by either positive infinity or negative infinity. All right? Zero, once again, is pulling towards zero. We know that. Any number, any value times zero, zero pulls it to zero, right? 5 times 0, 0. 6 times 0, 0. Negative 10 times 0, 0. 0 pulls everything towards itself. But on the other hand, infinity is not going towards 0. Increasingly large if it's going to positive infinity, and increasingly small if it's negative infinity. So you got one pulling towards 0, and the other getting increasingly large. Who's winning? Power struggle. It's like the tale of a brother and a sister, isn't it? <laughs> Goodness gracious. And number seven, the, our last indeterminate form is infinity minus infinity. Okay? Well, this first infinity value, or this first infinity symbol here, is pulling towards positive infinity. That's going one way to the right. Negative infinity, or minus infinity, is pulling toward negative infinity, which is going this way. So one is pulling that way, and the other is pulling that way. That's a problem. That's a problem. In other words, this can be rewritten, watch this, infinity minus infinity can be rewritten as infinity plus negative infinity. So one is pulling positive direction, one is pulling negative direction. That's a power struggle. So all of these forms are indeterminate because they're power struggles. Sound like real life, doesn't it? Uh-huh, I know. Power struggles. Who's winning? I don't know, indeterminate form. So as we're looking at L'Hopital, boy, L'Hopital, you <laughs> got us working here, L'Hopital. As we look at L'Hopital's rule, and understand it and go into L'Hopital's rule, um, there are some approaches that we have to take and implement when we have these various indeterminate forms, okay? When we have these various indeterminate forms. 
when we have these forms that doesn't render us what? A numeric value. Because it's not a, infinity is not a number, but it gives us no numeric value. So how do we approach these indeterminate forms? Here we go. If we have indeterminate form 1 and 2, forms 1 and 2, here's 1 and 2, 0 over 0 or plus or minus infinity divided by plus or minus infinity. Doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. It can be positive infinity over negative infinity, or negative infinity divided by positive infinity, or positive, positive, negative, negative. It does not matter the combination. Doesn't matter. All right? If we have a case like this, 0 divided by 0, or a case like this, the infinity divided by infinity, you use L'Hopital's rule. That's the key. Right there, that's the key. So in order to use L'Hopital's rule, we have to have uh, indeterminate form that satisfies condition one or satisfies condition two. That's it. You can only use L'Hopital's rule if condition one is satisfied or condition two. It must look like condition one or two. That's it. Well, what about the rest of them? What about condition three, four, five, six, seven? Here we go. If the indeterminate form is like condition three, four, or five, we have to use logarithmic or logarithms to rewrite. We have to use logarithms to rewrite our expression or our limit, and then do some other operations which we'll get to. But we have to use logarithms. So we're going to go back and do logarithmic differentiation. Remember that? Find the derivatives of logs. Yeah, we got to go back and do that again. And we have to know how to rewrite a log using the power rule and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to get to it. So that's what we're going to do if we have condition three, four, five. Logs, 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 natural log, log. All right. If we have condition six, where is six? Right here. If we have condition six, we're going to just take condition six and we're going to rewrite it as in zero over zero or the infinity divided by infinity, we have to manipulate it, do some algebraic gymnastics on it, right? And then we write it as zero divided by zero, or infinity divided by infinity, and we're going to be good, all right? And then if we have number seven, this indeterminate form here, that's just a matter of use, using algebra to combine. Use basic algebra to combine, in particular, we have to maybe recall how to uh, uh, determine least common denominators to combine two fractions, things like that, in order to work on those problems. All right, so there you go. Those are your indeterminate forms. This is our approach to indeterminate forms. With that being said, let's go ahead and define L'Hopital's rule now. Now we can get to the rule. Here we go. L'Hopital's rule. If the limit of f of x divided by g of x is indeterminate, meaning this limit right here gives us one of these situations, either one or two. That's it. It can't give us three through seven. If this limit of the quotient f of x divided by g of x, if it gives us zero divided by zero or the infinity divided by infinity, if that's the case, then the limit of f of x divided by g of x does equal the limit of f prime x divided by g prime x, provided that the latter exists or is infinite. The latter here is this. The limit is f prime divided by g prime. That's the latter. The limit is f of x over g of x, well, that's the former. We have the former and the latter. So provided that the latter exists, that means this limit is going to give us a value, or this limit can give us an output of infinity. Okay? There we go. So that's L'Hopital's rule. So now let's look at some examples. We have a lot of examples to do. I mean a lot, thousands and thousands and thousands, a lot of examples. No, just kidding, not thousands. <laughs> not thousands. Just kidding. All right, let's do one example here. Come on. Let's do it. 
So we have the limit as t approaches negative 3 of t squared plus t minus 6 and all that divided by t plus 3. All right? And so we're going to do it without using L'Hopital's rule. We're going to go way back to um, our uh, maybe second week of class when we you know, learned about how to evaluate limits and all the techniques that we use to evaluate the limit, things of that nature. All right? so let's go back to the first couple weeks of class and let's see if we can recall how we worked this one through. So we say whenever you have a limit, the first step, the first thought should be to use direct substitution and see if you directly substitute the input, see if you get an output value, and congratulations. Yay! Let's try it. So this is going to be the limit as t approaches negative 3 of negative 3 squared plus negative 3 minus 6 all divided by negative 3 plus 3, which gives us 0 divided by 0. Uh-oh! We have a problem. <laughs> we have an indeterminate form. Right? Look at that. That's indeterminate. That's 0 over 0. Now, before you jump into L'Hopital, right? Wait, hold on. Let's not jump into L'Hopital yet. Let's go back and recall what we learned a long time ago, back when we first learned about limits. Okay? We said if you have an indeterminate form, that means that the limit does exist and you have to what? Keep on going. Just keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. So how can you keep going with this one? Oh, I know how you can keep going with this one. Why don't you factor the numerator? Try that. Here we go. Watch this. Let me see, I'm going to write that probably in purple. Let me factor this numerator. So now I'm going to have the limit as t goes to negative 3 of, that's going to be t plus 3 times t minus 2 divided by t plus 3. See that? That's called keep on going. <laughs> but in actuality, that's yes. Factoring or the cancellation method. You have to factor in order to cancel. Well, what cancels here? Obviously, t plus 3, boom, bam. All right, once you get that out the way, now direct substitution is A OK. -okay. Once that is out the way. So it's out the way, let's directly substitute it in, see what's going to come out. Limit as t approaches negative 3 of, here we go, negative 3 minus 2, and we get a value of 5. Okay. I know you recall that. We did that a long, long time ago. And there you go. Our output is 5. Okay? Now, let's do the same problem using L'Hopital. So now we're going to did it without L'Hopital's rule. Now we're going to do it with L'Hopital's rule. All right. Let's go. Let's go over down. So we have the limit as t approaches negative 3 of t squared plus t minus 6 all over t plus 3. Okay, there we go. So with L'Hopital's rule, we try direct substitution first, and what do we get? Here we go. We got 0 over 0. So L'Hopital's rule says, all right, if f, the limit is of f of x divided by g of x, if that gives us an indeterminate form of either condition 1 or 2, then we can do this. Take the limit of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. Do not use the quotient rule. It is not the quotient rule. It is the derivative of f of x, numerator, divided by the derivative of g of x, denominator. You find the derivative of each individual function, each individual polynomial, if you will, of the rational expression here. So what's my derivative? Oh, so here we go. So the limit as t 
Approach is negative 3. All right, here we go. What's the derivative of my numerator? That's going to be 2t plus 1. 2t plus 1. Okay, good. What's the derivative of my denominator? t plus 3. What'd you say? What is it? t plus 3. What's the derivative? Oh, what? I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you. Anyway, I'm going to trust that you said 1. Yes? Okay. I'm not going to write a 1 down here. Everything's over 1. And now do direct substitution. Plug in negative 3 for t. So that's going to equal, that's going to give us now uh, 2 times negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 5. See how much easier that was with local child's rule? That's it. All right. So there we have it. So here we have with L'Hopital's rule and without L'Hopital's rule. Without L'Hopital's rule, you must know how to factor, go back to an algebraic skill, sharpen them up, recall that. It's important. It's important, right? Without, uh, with L'Hopital's rule, you need to know how to do calculus. Like take the derivative, differentiate maybe, yes? Yes, derivative. All right, and determine the form 0 over 0. Plug in, once you take the derivative, plug in negative 3, direct substitution, we get the same output. We clear on it, you good? Okay, let's go a little bit deeper now. Okay, so I'm gonna erase all of this stuff because we need more board for the examples that we're about to do. All right, so we have all of this. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye to all of this stuff. Goodbye. 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 All right, here we go. Let's look at some more examples. All right. We'll call this example number two. Here we go. Here we go. Limit. As x approach zero of e to the two x minus one, all divided by x. First things first, direct substitution. Let's see what we're going to get. Plug it in. If I go to direct substitution, I'm going to get e to the two times zero minus one over zero which yields e to the 0 minus 1 over 0, which is 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 divided by 0. Okay, so what we have here, we have a case of the indeterminate form, condition 1. It was 0 divided by 0, which means yes, you can. Yes, we can. Yes, you can. <laughs> Use L'Hopital's rule. <laughs> so come on, let's use L'Hopital's rule by finding our derivative. Well, I erased it. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to have the limit as x approach 0 of the derivative. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2. e to the 2x and the derivative of 1 is 0, all divided by what well, the derivative of x is 1. Stay right there which is going to equal now the limit as x approach 0 of 2 e to the 2 times 0 which is going to give us the limit as x approach 0 of 2 times e to the 0 which equals 2 times 1 which is 2 which is two, and we're through. Any questions about our example here? So our answer is two. Any questions about that? We good? Okay, let's go to our next example. Example number three. And let's see what's gonna happen. 
with example number three. Alright, so now we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared divided by e to the negative x. All right. Well, let's see what's happening here. Well, plug in negative infinity and see what we get. Or you can just look, you know, look at the graph. Take a look at the graph, right? If I do a sketch, I'm just going to sketch it. All right. Y equal x squared. Here we go. It's a rough sketch. All right. And now I'm going to do a sketch of e to the negative x, which goes like this. Call that y equals e to the negative x. y1, y2. Okay? So as x goes to negative infinity, that means as we go in this direction, as we go toward negative infinity, because that way is negative infinity, if you notice, our graph is going toward positive infinity. So this is going to equal positive infinity over, well, how about e to the negative x? All right. Well, as e to the negative x, as we go toward negative infinity, the graph also goes toward what? Uh-huh. Positive infinity. So now we have a case of positive infinity divided by positive infinity, which means that you and I can use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital. We can use L'Hopital. Ah, that's your L'Hopital, L'Hopital. Let's use L'Hopital's rule, which says take the derivative. Alright, so the limit now as x approaches negative infinity, alright, here we go, of 2x divided by negative e to the negative x, because that's the derivative of e to the negative x. Remember, it's the derivative of the differentiable function negative x, which is negative 1, times the actual function itself, e to the negative x. Okay? That's what we get. Okay, so now let's see what's happening. Let's take a look at this one. Let's see. All right. Well, what about 2x? Let's graph that. Let's just sketch the graph of that. 2x is a linear function that looks like this. Let's call that y3 equals 2x. All right. Now, as x goes to negative infinity, that means as x walks in this direction, that's negative infinity. Which way is the graph going? The graph is walking downward. So that's going to negative infinity. Divided by. Alright, let's take a look at this fellow right here. Alright, so basically what we want to do, we want to take e to the negative x and reflect it over the x-axis. See that? And he's going to look like this. All right, we're going to call him y4, which equals negative e to the negative x. He's reflected over the y-axis. All right, so let's see what he's doing. So now as x goes to negative infinity, which way is the graph going? What would you say? Right, negative infinity. So we have another case in which we have to do L'Hopital's rule again. You can use L'Hopital's rule over and over and over and over and over and over for the same problem until we get a value. All right, let's go L'Hopital again. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of, well, what's my derivative here? That's just going to be 2 divided by, all right, that's going to be e to the negative x. Well, 
what does that equal? This is not too bad because we know that as x goes to negative infinity, 2 goes to itself, 2. Yes. And we know that as x goes to negative infinity, where does e to the negative x go? Go back to that graph. I think that was y2 right here. This one goes to positive infinity. Remember that? Okay. Which equals, well, what is 2 over a very large number? Anytime you have a very small numerator and an infinitely large denominator, that's approaching zero. Like a zero, I see you, zero. That's approaching zero. So this fella here equals zero. Okay. Now, for my BC students, right? Look at this BC students. BC students come in real close. BC students, you know, when we talked about comparative growth rates and the comparative growth factor, and we said how um, logs grow slower and at a, a much, much slower pace than polynomials or algebraic, and how the algebraic grow at a much slower pace than the exponentials, and how the exponentials grow at a much slower pace than the factorials and how the factorials grow at a much slower pace than the um, variable powered exponentials. In other words, a power to a power or a variable to a variable. Okay, a variable to a variable, right? We have an algebraic over an exponential. We have smaller, I'm sorry, we have the algebraic over the, same thing here too. We have the algebraic over the exponential. So we have a smaller growing function in terms of its value divided by a larger growing function in terms of its value. So the smaller over the larger is going to give us zero. So you're going to look at that whole comparative growth, growth rate and growth chart for the BC students. You didn't have to go through all of this. Okay? All right. But since we did, it's over now, and that's it. Okay. More examples. More examples. All right, what's next? Let me see here. All right, example four. This time we have the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the negative x times the square root of x. All right, so what are we going to get in this case? Let's um, plug in infinity here. Well, let's see. Well, let's look at our graphs here. We're going to get a graph. Well, we already know what e to the negative x looks like because it's right here. So I'm going to call this one, I guess, y5. Then we have a square root function. That's y6. All right, so as x goes to infinity, what does this graph go, go toward? Zero. Zero times being multiplied, right? Zero times. Well, as the square root function goes to infinity, well, the graph itself goes to infinity. So please notice, we have an indeterminate form that's not quote-unquote L'Hopital ready. It's not L'Hopital ready. It's not L'Hopital fashioned or styled. It is zero times infinity. And we mentioned when we have 0 times positive or negative infinity, you have to rewrite it. You have to rewrite it to make it fit L'Hopital ready or L'Hopital form. All right? We have to rewrite it. Let's see if we can rewrite it. 
Let's see here now. All right. I think I'm finished with all the graphs. Let's rewrite it. So I want to rewrite this as the limit as x goes to infinity of, I want to rewrite this e to the negative x. I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to leave the square root of x up in the numerator. And this e to the negative x, I'm going to drop it down to the denominator and write it as e to the power of positive x. That's the rewrite. That's what I was talking about And our rewrite. Rewrite it and make it fit condition 1 or 2. Let's see if it fits now. Now I'll put infinity in. Well, if I put infinity in a square root function, that's going to infinity as x approaches infinity. And how about e to the x? Did I graph e to the x? I did not graph e to the x. Let me graph e to the x on y2. e to the x looks like this. I'm going to do it in purple. e to the x looks like this. There's e to the x. This is um, four, five, six, seven. Y seven, which equals e to the positive x. See, that's in purple. That's e to the x. That's what it looks like. So as x goes to infinity, e to the x also goes to infinity. And as a result of me rewriting this problem, I put it in a form that allows me to use and implement. L'Hopital's rule. So now let me use L'Hopital's rule. So I got the limit as x approaches zero, oh, I'm sorry, infinity. Find the derivative. What's the derivative of the square root of x? It's 1 over 2 square root x divided by what's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. And this is going to equal the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over, now we're doing the bump down. Got to do the bump down. The bump, bump, bump down. Bump down. Okay. Technically, it's multiplying by the reciprocal. I got it. But the bump down. You know, take this division line and just bump it down on top of this line right here. Just bump everything down. And you're going to get 2 square root x times e to the x. Well, what does that equal? Well, here's what we know. <clears throat> we know 2 to the x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. As x goes to infinity, 2 square root x also goes to infinity. We know that x goes to infinity, e to the x also goes to infinity. So we're going to have 1 divided by infinity, which just happens to be, again, 0. 0. BC students, again, comparative growth. Everyone else, L'Hopital's rule. All right. We good? Example 4 is okay. Example 5. There's more and more. <laughs> All right. Erase, erase, erase. Erase, erase, erase. Erase, erase, erase. Erase, erase, erase. I hope you guys understand. I'm acting kind of a... Uh, silly and whatnot because you know this uh, COVID-19 is very serious and um, people are in shelter in place in their homes um, many many people are becoming sick and losing their lives and uh, many people are losing their job not getting income so sometimes when things are difficult and hard and challenging and you have obstacles and trials and tribulations in your life it's good to laugh. Act silly. Yeah. Laugh your way through. And silly your way through. You'll feel better. Because if we didn't laugh, we'd probably cry. Things are bad enough as it is. So find some joy in something. Let's get back to Lopi Top. <laughs> Alright. Back 
to L'Hopital. Back to L'Hopital. Where do we leave off? Let me see, what's the next example? Alright, here we go. Example 5. Okay. The limit as x approach infinity of one plus two over x to the power of x. All right. Here we go. So first things first, how about we go ahead and just plug in infinity, see what we get. Alright, if I do that, I'm going to get the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 2 over infinity to the power of infinity, which equals, well, 2 over infinity goes to 0, which is going to equal 1 to the infinity. That's an indeterminate form. There is something else that we have to do in this case. And we said when we have this form right here, this indeterminate form, which is either number 3, 4, or 5, I can't recall which one it was, but whichever one it was, when you have this form, you have to use logarithms. Okay? So we're going to have to now take this situation first and set it equal to y. So let me just write over here, use logs. Got to use logs. So first we have to set it equal to y. You have to set y equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 2 over x to the power of x. Now, you ask the question, why must you set it equal to y? Why, why? Why, 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 why? Well, let me tell you why. Do you recall when we learned um, logarithmic differentiation? I'm going to write this over here. Logarithmic differentiation. And we have to find the derivative, if you will, of, let's say, x to the x. A function to a function. A function to a function. You see that? Look at this. A function, 1 plus 2 divided by x. A differentiable function to a function. A function to a function a function to the power of a function. They're related. And so when you use L'Hopital's rule, you have to take the derivative. So we're following what we learned when we took the derivative when we learned logarithmic differentiation. Okay? And so in order for us to operate in this context, if you can recall, if you wanted to find the derivative of this, you said you have to set y equal to x to the power of x, right? And then take the log of both sides. Take the natural log of y times the natural log of x to the power of x in order to find the derivative. Well, it's the same approach right here that we have to take with our situation right here. So this is why we set it equal to y, because of what we learned with logarithmic differentiation using logs when we did problems like this. I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to get back to our problem. Okay? All right. So we set it equal to y, and we have to take the log of both sides. Here we go. So natural log of y equal the natural log of the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 2 over x to the power of x. All right, there we go. Any questions about that? Everybody good with that? 
Okay, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch natural log and limit as x goes to infinity. I'm going to bring the natural log in and I'm going to bring the limit as x goes to infinity out. You can do that because our function here is a continuous function. No holes, no gaps, it's not piecewise. You know, it's, it's continuous as we go out to infinity from x going out toward positive infinity. We're continuous here. So we can switch it. So we can write it as the natural log of y equals the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 2 over x to the power of x. There we go. Still have a continuous function here. So this is okay. And so now all of the work is going to happen on this right side. Okay? This natural log y, I'm just going to keep bringing it down. I'm not going to do anything over here on this side. Everything happens right here. Alright? So initially we got 1 to the power of infinity. Indeterminate form. Now I have a log on it. Let's see if anything changes. What is that going to give me? Equal. So take infinity, put it in for x right here. I'm going to get 2 over infinity, which is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Do you recall what the natural log of 1 is? I give you a clue. I see you. Very good. 0. The natural log of 1 is 0. So now I'm going to have 0. Then I'm going to put infinity in for x right here. I'm going to have 0 times infinity. How about that? Is that L'Hopital ready? Can I use L'Hopital's rule on this one? No. I can't. That is not L'Hopital ready. So I'm going to have to rewrite it. I'm going to have to rewrite it. Oh, wait, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm sorry, whoa. Whoa, I'm getting ahead of myself here. That should be zero to the power of infinity. Yeah, that's better. Zero to the power of infinity. I'm jumping the gun. I'm getting ahead of myself. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. But it's still not L'Hopital. So we still have more work to do. All right, here we go. Equals. The limit as x approach infinity of, now go back and use the power rule for logarithms. The power rule of log says you take your exponential power and bring it to the front. That's the power rule. Power. You always lead with what? Power. Power comes first. Bring the power to the front. All right. So, we're going to have x natural log of 1 plus 2 divided by x. All right, let's see if that move made a difference. Let's see. So that's going to give me take infinity, plug it in for x. I'm going to get infinity times, all right, now take infinity, plug it in for x right here. We're going to get 1 plus 2 over infinity is 0 in the natural log of 1, because 1 plus 0 is 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. Well, look at that. That's still not L'Hopital ready. We still have an indeterminate form. And if you can recall with me, when we had this indeterminate form, which we had over here, remember that? We said if you have that form, you have to rewrite now. You have to rewrite it and get into 0 divided by 0 or infinity over infinity. So once we get to this form right here, we're almost there. We're almost there. Let's rewrite it. And that's going to put us there now. Here we go. Here's how we're going to rewrite it. Equal. The limit as x goes to infinity. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this x right here? You see this x? 
I want you to know that x is the same thing as 1 over 1 over x. There's your rewrite. Right there. Bam. That's it. That's how you're going to rewrite this x. As 1 divided by the quotient 1 over x. Alright, here we go. So now we have the limit of the natural log of 1 plus 2 divided by x. And all this is divided by 1 over x. Alright, is that L'Hopital ready? Let's plug in infinity now for x. Well, this is going to give me 1 plus 0. The natural log of 1 is 0. Divided by, take infinity now, put it right here. 1 over infinity is 0. Congratulations. Yay! We did all that work. We got to this point. So we can now use L'Hopital's rule. We can use the rule now. All right. So now let's go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule. All of that work to get to L'Hopital's rule. And so now we're at L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule states that we can go ahead and take the derivative of that. Here we go. In fact, let me erase the rest of the board. I might as well take it all off. Let me take it all off. Let me take all of it off. All right, so limit. As x goes to infinity. All right, what's the derivative of my numerator? Remember, the derivative of natural law is, it was u prime over u. Remember that? Yeah, the derivative of natural law, remember, um, d dx of natural log of u equals u prime over u. Recall that? That's what we're dealing with right here with this natural log now. So it's the derivative. Here we go. What's the derivative of 1? Good, 0. What's the derivative of 2 divided by x? Okay. That's going to give us negative 2 over x squared. Okay? And so, negative 2 over x squared, that is my u prime. And all of this is divided by u itself, which is 1 plus 2 over x. Everybody good? Okay, good. So that takes care of my numerator. What's the derivative of my denominator? What's the derivative of 1 over x? It's negative 1 over x squared. Very good. All right. So that's our derivative right there. That's the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. That's what we'll get. That's what we get. Okay. So in essence, we're taking uh, this and all of this. All right. So this is going to equal the limit. As x goes to infinity, of, watch this, we're going to have negative 2 x squared divided by 1 plus 2 over x, that's my numerator, times, now I'm going to take my denominator and multiply by the reciprocal, times x squared over 1. Oh. 
Nick. There you go. Which equals the limit as x gets increasingly large. All right, if I take negative 2 divided by x squared times a negative x squared, multiply this. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? And x squared and x squared cancel out. So in my numerator, I'm left with 2. And in my denominator, I'm left with 1 plus 2 over x. Okay. Good. Everybody good? Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and do more direct substitution. Take infinity, plug in for x. That's going to equal 2 divided by 1 plus 0, which is 1, which is simply 2. Now, if you tell me that the answer to our problem is 2, that is absolutely incorrect. It's not 2. Because you have to go back, right? Watch this. Don't forget about this fella right here. Don't forget about natural log y. Don't forget that. Go back and grab it. So what we have here is we have the natural log of y equals 2. And so we need to find out what exactly y equals. What is y? Well, write it like this. The natural log base e of y equals 2. Because that's what the natural log base is. It's base e, right? Okay, so we have natural log base e of y equaling 2, and I call this wheels on the bus. Just go around in a circle. Start from the base and go around. Wheels, because the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. Wheels on the bus. So the wheels on the bus says start with the base, grab the power, and it equals the argument. So e to the power of 2 equals y. So that's what y is. So now let's put it all together. Because y, ladies and gentlemen, y is this expression right here. Let's put it all together. So we said y equals the limit as x approached infinity of 1 plus 2 over x to the power of x, which equals e squared. And there you go. And once you get to that step, you can drop the y. You don't need this no more because this was just an aid or a support to help you find or determine the limit as x gets increasingly large of that function raised to the power of function. So, there you go. The limit as x approach infinity of 1 plus 2 divided by x to the power of x is e squared. There you go. And by the way, if we're looking at the limit as x approach infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x, that's just e to the power of 1, and so on and so forth, okay? And this is what I had explaining one of those uh, indeterminate forms, that right there, okay? But we derive e, we derive this number e using L'Hopital's rule. That's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Mr. Wright, are you finished? Do we have more examples? Yes, there are more examples. We're not done. Listen, if you need to follow the video and take a break, I understand. I do understand, but we're not finished. That was example five. 
I'm going to do example six now. Alright, example six. Many of examples, many examples, many examples. Alright. Let's see what we have for, for example six. Alright, we have the limit as x approaches zero from the right side of the sine of x to the power of x. Oh wow, look at that. Trigonometry. See what's going on here. Let's grab it. Well first let's start off with zero. Let's do some direct substitution. Let's put zero in first. That's going to give us the sine of zero to the power of zero, which is going to give us zero to the power of zero in determinant form. Power struggle. The base is going towards zero, the power is going toward one. Power struggle. It's not locatile rating. In other words, we have a function to the power of a function. Function to a function. We just did one like that. Function to the power of a function. We need some help from the logs. Please call the logs. We need the logs. Need the logs. Need the logs. Let's use the logs again. So y equal limit as x approaches zero from the right side of the sine of x to the power of x. Alright, let's take the log of both sides. Natural log of y equals the natural log of the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of sine x to the power of x. Alright, <clears throat> sine x to the power of x. Sine x is a continuous function. Go ahead and swap it out. That's okay. You can swap out natural log and limit. They can switch places because sine x is a continuous function. So let's go ahead and do that. So natural log of y does equal the limit as x approaches zero from the right side. Alright, of the natural log of sine x to the power of x. There we go. Alright, so all we've done to it was put a natural log on it. Let's see if putting a natural log on it makes a difference. Let's see. Alright. So now, if we take 0 from the right and plug it in for x, right, well what is the sine of 0? The sine of zero is zero. So we have the natural log of zero to the power of x. Now, uh, the natural log of zero from the right side, well, if I look at zero coming from the right side of natural log, that's going to negative infinity. So this is going to give us negative infinity to the power of zero. Because the natural log of zero from the right side goes to negative infinity. Okay? In other words, if I look at the natural log function, there's an asymptote right here. There's an asymptote, something to find here. And the graph goes like this. And so if I'm approaching zero from the right side in this direction, the function is going toward negative infinity. So that's why this is negative infinity, but it's to the power of zero. That's not L'Hopital ready. Nope, nope, nope. No, nope, 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 nope. 
So this was not L'Hopital ready, nor is this L'Hopital ready. Let's use our logarithmic rules. So it's going to equal the limit as x goes to 0 from the right, take the power, bring it in front of x, natural log of the sine of x. All right, let's see what that's going to do us. Well, if I put in 0 for x, that's going to give me 0 times, once again, the natural log of 0 coming in from the right is going to go to negative infinity. That's not L'Hopital ready. Not at all. I can't use L'Hopital on this one either. So I have three indeterminate forms so far. It's sort of like the last problem. Three indeterminate forms in which I cannot use L'Hopital's rule. So I have to keep on going till I get to L'Hopital's rule. The good news is this. I know once I see zero times any infinity, I know I'm a step away. I'm almost there. Almost there. Come on, let's do another step. And that other step, once again, is taking this x and rewriting that x. Write it as x equaling 1 over 1 divided by x. There it is. That's how you want to express that x. All right. So now this is going to equal the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of the natural log of sine x divided by 1 over x. Now plug it in. Let's see what we get. 0 here. And by plugging 0, the natural log of 0 as we approach 0 from the right equals negative infinity. And by the way, you can only approach zero from the right because the natural log function, just a sketch of it, only approaches zero from the right side. It does not approach zero from the left at all. There's nothing on the left of zero. So you can only approach it from the right, from this side. That's why we have this plus here, from the right. You can't come at zero from the left. There's nothing on the left side. It's empty. All right. So we have negative infinity divided by, plug in zero for x, one divided by zero is uh, infinity, positive infinity. I mean, think about that. Grab one over x. If y equals 1 over x, that looks like this. That's just a rough sketch. Not drawing the scale, ladies and gentlemen. That's just a sketch. That's a sketch. Not drawing the scale. It's a sketch. It's a hyperbola. Okay? So we have a hyperbola here of two branches. And I'm not interested in the right, the left side. So this branch really doesn't mean nothing. It's not represented. It's the right side. And notice as we approach zero, as we go towards zero, as we go towards zero, the graph is going to positive infinity. So we have negative infinity divided by positive infinity, and that is L'Hopital ready. All right, yes. Yes. Because the infinities doesn't matter. One can be negative, one can be positive, it doesn't matter. That's L'Hopital ready. So I've done all of this work. And now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. <clears throat> now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so here we go. So we have the limit as x approaches 0. From the right, take the derivative. What's the derivative of natural log of sine x? Well, it's u prime over u. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So it's going to be cosine x divided by the sine of x. All right. All over the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. All right. 
Here we go. All right, let's multiply by reciprocal. This is going to equal the cosine of x over the sine of x times negative x squared over 1. All right. Now watch this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite cosine x over sine x as cotangent. So that's going to give me the cotangent of x times negative x squared. Because that's what sine over cosine is, cotangent. That's the cotangent of x times negative x squared, which equals negative x squared divided by the tangent of x because of the reciprocal identities. Cotangent x equals 1 divided by tangent x. The reciprocal identities. So I'm going to write this like that. Let's go grab it. Limit. As x approaches 0 from the right side of negative x squared, negative x squared divided by tangent of x. Okay, so now plug in 0 into x. So we're going to have negative of 0 squared divided by the tangent of 0, which is 0 divided by 0. And here we go again. We have another L'Hopital's rule that we have to use. Because this L'Hopital ready. So we have to do L'Hopital again. So here we go. So now we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. The derivative here is negative 2x. And the derivative of tangent x, do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Correct. Secant squared x. which equals the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of negative 2x times cosine squared of x. Because you have to recall those reciprocal identities that secant squared x is the same as 1 divided by cosine squared x. They're reciprocals. So I'm going to rewrite, in other words, rewrite 1 over secant squared x as equal to simply cosine squared x. And of course there is a negative 2x here. And this is also times negative 2x. There we go. Plug in 0. So this is going to give me negative 2 times 0 times the cosine squared of 0, which simply equals, well this right here gives us 0. 0 times, the cosine of 0 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1, which ultimately equals 0. And there is your limit. So, where do we start? Way over here. The limit as x approaches 0 on the right of the sine x to the power of x is 0. Okay, one more example and we're done. Alright? Okay, come on, let's do one more. Let me erase my board. Last example.
Example 7. The limit as x approach 1 of 1 over the natural log of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Alright, so the first thing we should do, direct substitution, let's see what we get. Direct substitution. So, we're going to have the limit as x approach 1 of 1 over the natural log of 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, and that's going to equal... So what is this going to give us? The limit as x approaches 1 of the natural log of 1. This right here, this goes to 0. So that's going to give me 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0, which equals infinity minus infinity, and that is not L'Hopital friendly. That is not L'Hopital ready. You can't use L'Hopital's rule on this indeterminate form. You cannot use L'Hopital's rule in this indeterminate form. So in this case, we have some algebraic manipulations to make. We have to maybe find least common denominators, things of that nature, okay? So let's first start with the least common denominator. Let's do that first. All right, so, here we go. Do that. Let's look at it like this. The limit as x approach 1. Alright, here we go. We want to go 1 over the natural log of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now the reason I made my division lines much longer is to find the least common denominator. So I have to multiply x minus 1 here and natural log of x over here. Alright, so that's my least common denominator. Let's multiply that out and let's see what we get. So we're going to get the limit as x approach 1. Alright, what do we get right here? Well, in our numerator, we're going to have x minus 1, because x 1 times x minus 1 is just x minus 1, minus the natural log of x, all divided by x minus 1, natural log of x. There we go. Please, do not make this mistake. Do not put a parenthesis, well you can put a parenthesis around x minus 1, but do not cancel out x minus 1 and x minus 1. Don't cancel those out. That's what we call mathematical blasphemy. Hello, Javon Smith. <laughs> Do not cancel those out. Okay? You can't cancel across subtraction or addition. You cannot cancel across subtraction or addition. Alright? So, since you can't cancel anything, let's go ahead and plug in 1 and see what we get. Alright? So, we have the limit. as x approach 1. Since I found the least common denominator, now plug in 1. See if it changes anything. Alright. So now we're going to have 1 minus 1 minus the natural log of 1 all over 1 minus 1 times the natural log of 1. What's that going to give us? Well that's going to be 0 
and zero minus um, zero minus natural log of one is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Over that's going to be zero. That's going to be zero. Zero times zero is zero. Okay, L'Hopital ready. Congrats. Now we can implement and use L'Hopital's rule. Yes. Let's use L'Hopital's rule now because we have zero divided by zero. So let's go ahead now and use L'Hopital's rule. All right, and we're using L'Hopital's rule on this step right here. So coming out of this step here, let's use L'Hopital's rule coming out of that step. Okay? So what's my derivative here? So I'm going to have the limit. The limit as x approach 1, the derivative of x is 1, so I'm going to have a 1. The derivative of 1 is 0 minus the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over x. So that takes care of my numerator. Please notice here in my denominator, to find the derivative of that, you have to use the product rule. Product rule. So it's going to be the derivative of the first. It's the derivative of the first, which is x minus 1, which is 1, times natural log of x, plus the first, x minus 1, times the derivative of natural log x, which is 1 over x. Okay. So there we go. All right, let's see what happens now. Since we found the derivative, we used L'Hopital's rule, we differentiated, now plug in 1. Let's see what we get. So we're going to have now the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 minus, well, 1 over 1 is, oh no. 1 over 1 is 1 over, uh, put in 1 for x here, natural log of 1 is 0, plus you're going to get 0 times 1, which equals 0 divided by 0, which means you have to do L'Hopital once again. Is L'Hopital ready? L'Hopital form. We can evaluate using L'Hopital's rule. All right, let's do it again. So now we're going to have the limit as x approach 1. Take our derivative here. Well, once again, the derivative of 1 is 0 minus minus the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared, divided by, all right, what's our derivative of this here? Natural log x is 1 over x. And then on this side here, you must use the product rule again. Let's use the product rule once again. We did, we did that already when we looked at it right here. It's the same thing. It's the exact, well, not the same thing. This was natural log x. This one is 1 over x, so it's slightly different. But let's just go ahead and go with it. So we know it's 1 over x plus, okay, the derivative of the first is 1 times the second plus the first times the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative 1 over x squared.
All right. And so we have a lot of stuff happening here. And so, in essence, this can be written as, here we go, uh, 1 over x squared divided by 1 over x plus 1 over x plus x minus 1 times 1 over x squared. And what I'm going to do, you see this minus sign, this negative sign right here? I'm going to move it to right here and make that plus a minus sign there. Okay. Let's try it again. Let's plug in one. I mean, listen, there's a lot of simplifications we can do right here. If you want, you know 1 over x plus 1 over x is 2 of them. Okay, that's going to give us 2 over x. You can simplify that if you want, or you can leave it the way it is and substitute 1. Directly substitute 1 in. Let's see what we get. So now we have the limit as x approaches 1. Plug it in. Here we go. We're going to have 1 over 1 squared divided by 1, because when you plug in 1 for x, you get 1 plus 1 minus, that's going to give me 0 times 1 over 1 squared, which is 1 squared. And this is going to equal, well, that numerator is just 1, divided by 1 plus 1 is uh, 2. That's zero, and that's it. There you go. So our answer is one half. And so the limit of this fella is a half. And that's it. Okay, I know this was a long video. I know it's a lot of material. Uh, but I tried to go through um, L'Hopital's rule and I tried to also give you limits that involve other indeterminate forms other than zero over zero or infinity over infinity to kind of help you see what you have to do when you encounter those type of, uh, of indeterminate forms. Okay, everyone be safe. Thanks for listening. Thanks for paying me some attention. If you have any questions, comments, please be sure to email me. Um, stay safe, social distance, wash your hands. And um, stay tuned for the next video. All right? Take care. Stay positive.